Hi, I'm Alan Steinheimer. I'm here for another Meet the Gaffer episode with Luke Sierveld. Uh, we're here in my house, which violates the very first rule of filmmaking, which is never shoot in your own house. But um, I figure Luke's not going to break too much of my furniture. Um, so we're going to talk about electrical distribution with plug-in lights. Um, sounds easy enough. Uh, and most of the time, if you're just plugging one KinoFlow or uh, one LED light in, it's probably not much of an issue. Uh, sometimes we show up with more than that though. Um, one of the bigger lights that I work with is an M18 uh, in terms of plugging into the wall. Uh, this will draw 17 amps um, and so it will pop a 15 amp breaker. Um, and so I am constantly in search of a guaranteed 20 amp breaker when I get into a house. Uh, my favorite target for that is the garbage disposal. Um, take your uh, flashlight from your toolkit and um, if the house has a garbage disposal uh, open up underneath you usually have to clear out a bunch of stuff and uh, we can see right here that there's uh, two uh, duplexes one is wired to a switch which is right here sometimes on the wall um, and that one to the left uh, actually goes to the uh, uh, dishwasher, but we can pull that out and plug that light in and we're virtually guaranteed that it's a 20 amp circuit. Um, some of the other tools that I bring for this sort of plug in the wall situation. Uh, I have a little tool kit. Uh, I don't carry a lot in it. A knife, uh, scissors, flashlight, sharpie. Um, a lot of these other tools I leave back in my tool bag. Amp probe, um, circuit tester, uh, this is a lighted plug. I'm starting to convert uh, most of my extension cords over to lighted plugs. If you plug these into the wall, it tells you with a little tiny light that there's actually electricity in that circuit, which is sort of nice. Um, <clears throat> we joke around in the set. This is the modern LED uh, electrical distribution. The LEDs draw so little power that uh, you can actually, it's a, almost a problem, you can plug a lot of lights into just one circuit. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about uh, household circuits. Um, older style houses will have two prongs, that is to say, there's no ground right there. And uh, so I carry a three to two adapter. I don't really like these. Um, they, they go in here and then you can plug your regular extension cord that's got a ground into it. But I find that if these things are old plugs with only the two prongs in it, uh, it's usually super loose. And I find that half the time these, these things will fall out easily. Uh, so I just try and avoid those altogether. Most houses have some kind of upgraded electrical and they'll generally have a grounded outlet somewhere in the house. Um, now, where they're figuring out whether it's a 15 or 20 amp circuit, if you see this little slit to the side and it's a duplex that's in the wall, that is almost a guarantee of a 20 amp circuit. Um, you can see on this one, this is the more modern um, decor version. Uh, there's no slit, uh, so this is most likely uh, uh, 15 amp, but it could be 20 amp. So let's look at uh, this house, for example, which I actually wired myself. And theoretically, uh, whenever there was a 20 amp circuit, I should have gotten a little duplex that had the side slit. And in this GFI, you can see that that is indeed true. But if you go to this side, and we're going to demo something else here as well. If you go to this side, you can see that this is, although I know this is a 20 amp circuit, there's actually only one little, there's no slit on the side. And um, so that's not a necessarily a guarantee that you're finding a 20 amp circuit. All right, um, so we're going to do a quick demonstration of the amp probe. Um, basically, uh, you've got a uh, amp measurement here, which uh, you can only do with a single wire. So that's if you have a three wire conductor extension cord, you can't measure amperage. So that's really for inside of an electrical box. Continuity tester, it's helpful when you're troubleshooting uh, lights. I never use the resistance. Uh, DC, uh, AC power is a little curvy line, and DC power, which is generally 12 volts, uh, is this two straight line with a dotted thing. So we're gonna measure uh, AC voltage here. 
And I just stick the two probes right in there and we can see that we have a hundred and it jumps around a little bit. 122.7 volts. That's very typical PG&E power in San Francisco. Uh, you get 120, uh, 122 volts. All right. Um, enough of that. Uh, one other uh, slightly more drastic version when you're using a bunch of these bigger lights is to uh, go to an electrical uh, rental house and get a dryer plug uh, to bait. And uh, these have only three wires, um, uh, so it goes in the dryer room. I usually don't do the range. Sometimes there's electric ranges. Um, those, everything around a kitchen and a range in particular is heavier and harder to pull out and harder to get to, uh, and also extremely greasy in a lot of houses. And um, so if you go into the washer dryer room, it's usually easier to get to this uh, outlet. There's two hots and a ground. So that means that there's 220 coming out of here. You cannot get 110 out of here because there's no neutral. So that means if I plug in an Edison distribution box like this, the only thing coming out of there is 220. So I want to be careful. Uh, I try and label it extensively so that people don't plug 110 lights in. Now, how do you know whether your uh, ballast uh, or light will run 220. Generally, there's a little tech spec sheet. Uh, this is the Power Gems ballast for the Airy. And if you uh, take a look here, it says 100 to 265 volts AC. Um, <clears throat> on the Joker ballast, a lot of those will have a switch. You need to switch over to 220. The really old ones on the Jokers don't uh, do 220, I think. Um, most ballasts that are five to eight years old and, and newer are uh, all 220 capable. And there's an auto sensing switch inside. You don't have to, to do a switch for the most part, except for the Joker ones. All right, let's talk about uh, sort of strategies. Um, so when I'm looking for a bunch of circuits, let's say I'm doing a, I, you know, occasionally you're doing a tungsten shoot in a house and then you're using maybe 2K open face which each of those draws 16.6 amps. Uh, so you really want to dedicate a circuit to each one. I know the garbage disposal is good for one for the bigger lights. I know that one side of the kitchen will almost certainly have uh, one circuit. The other side of the kitchen will almost always have one circuit. Frequently the refrigerator will also have its own circuit. So there's four circuits before you even go into the general house. Um, sometimes by the dryer or washer, there's also another outlet that's generally also a 20 amp circuit. And then you can plug smaller lights in throughout the house. Uh, I just bring 50 foot extension cords so that I can always run from the kitchen in a house situation. Uh, even if I'm shooting at the complete other end of the house, I know that in the kitchen, I'm almost guaranteed to have a 20 amp uh, breaker there. Um, if for some reason I pop a circuit, my usual strategy is that I do not go to the panel right away and flip the circuit breaker. I first uh, try and find another circuit uh, that seems to be still on, that's hot, um, and I plug into that, I get my light back up. Uh, by leaving the breaker off, I know that if I find another circuit, it's not, if another duplex that's hot, it's not on the same circuit. Uh, so that's the point of not flipping it right away. Because otherwise, once you flip it, again, you could be plugging into the exact same circuit. The thing could happen again, uh, popping the breaker. So uh, let's go take a look at a breaker panel. All right, let's take a look at a, uh, this to be a fairly modern sub panel. Uh, you just push that switch to open it up. Uh, you come in here, you can see a bunch of 20 amp breakers, some 15, more 20s, and a couple of 15 GFCI. That's the new code for uh, bedrooms. Um, you'll see that more and more. They're sensitive to voltage. Sometimes uh, certain things will trip them. Uh, so, two reasons I come back here to look at this. One is to look and see if the things actually ID'd. Did they, did they actually label all the circuits? In this case, uh, they're almost all labeled. Uh, that helps me if I'm looking in the kitchen trying to find out are there only, is there only one circuit in the kitchen or the two or three or four or five? Um, this will help me tell. 
if I pop a breaker, that is to say, you, you, you typically can even hear it if it's nearby go pop, uh, and then the light goes down. You've known you've uh, popped a circuit breaker, or occasionally a GFCI. Um, so I come out here and uh, you have to look very closely and you can see that this 15 amp breaker is ever so slightly different than the other ones. That's what a popped breaker looks like. To reset it, you go back and then forward. Now we're back on. So it's not always easy to see and you want to be careful. You don't want to start flipping everything back and forth because there may be computers or other things that have, you know, fairly, fairly sensitive to losing electricity, not to mention all the clocks. Um, anyway, that's an inside sub panel. Um, helpful to take a look at if you're going to be in a house all day. So here's a very typical suburban um, outside main panel. Uh, power comes in here from up above, goes through the meter, and runs to the breakers in here. We're going to open up this panel. This is, again, a very typical panel. There's a way to hold it up here. And you can see these labels, not everything's well labeled, um, mostly 20s. Uh, in fact, it's all 20s. Uh, there's also uh, the sub panel that we saw earlier. Uh, and another sub panel that's further in there. So um, this is where you might also look for a, a blown circuit. That's, a, that's basically the uh, main panel coming in. Okay, we're back in the kitchen, my favorite place to uh, look for power. Uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, GFI circuits, sometimes they will have circuits downstream. In other words, you'll have a light plugged into a duplex, all of a sudden the light will stop working, you'll go back to the circuit panel, you can't find any blown breakers. What's actually happened is there's a GFI circuit further upstream and you're going to have to push the little button to reset that. You may want to find a new place to plug in. So in summary, I'm really relying on the kitchen uh, and also the washer dryer room if there is one uh, for power. I'm almost guaranteed if there's a garbage disposal, there's one. One side of the kitchen is one circuit. The other side of the kitchen is a circuit. The garage will usually have a circuit. Uh, sometimes the fridge and uh, four circuits is enough for almost any shoot in a house uh, where you're just trying to plug into the wall. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.